because you think of the loss of life and just people going doing their normal job and unfortunately not going home at the end of the day just it's, it's, it's quite tragic yeah and to think we actually came out of that alive <laughs> So what was it that had brought such tragedy to the quiet town of Invergauri? Once again, the inquiry team will begin their investigations, this time concentrating on the signalling system here, which may have led these two trains to disaster. The investigation started two miles back at the signal box in Long Forgan. The type of signals in operation here were of the old semaphore variety, common on railways all over the world at this time. If the signal's arm is raised to an angle of 45 degrees, the driver may proceed. If the arm is horizontal, the signal is at danger, instructing the driver to stop. Long Forgan had a typical setup, consisting of an initial distance signal to warn the driver to slow the train, a signal box for operating the signals, and a second signal further down the line to bring the train to a complete stop. On the day of the crash, John McRae of the Tayside Fire Brigade came to investigate the signals at Long Forgan. We discovered there was a signal down there, just beside that tree, roughly in that area, so we know, but there was a signal there, and the signal was showing an incorrect signal, in as much that rather than being horizontal for stop or a 45 for go, it was halfway between. McRae discovered that although the signalman had set the lever in his box to danger to halt the express, the semaphore arm did not in fact return to the full horizontal stop position. The driver interpreted the ambiguous signal as go and accelerated on towards Invergauri, unaware of the stationary train on the line ahead. Disaster was now imminent. As the express train came round the bend at 70 miles per hour, it couldn't possibly stop in time, colliding with the stationary train and smashing its back four carriages into the bay. The driver had clearly been let down by an archaic mechanical system, but engineers needed to know exactly how it had failed him. Traditional semaphore signals have been used on railways for well over a hundred years, and they're simply simple operated by a lever being pulled. When a signal lever is pulled, a system of cogs and chains at the signal box controls a wire that runs to the signal post, adjusting the angle of the arm. So why was the signal arm at Long Forgan at such a strange angle? Could have been in the position it was because it had been a cold night and the tension on the wire had increased as the temperature got colder, which meant that it wasn't so easy for the signal to return to the full horizontal stop position. When questioned, several signal men who worked at Long Forgan admitted having problems with the same signal during periods of cold weather. If one cold night could cripple the mechanics of the semaphore system and cause such devastation, it was time to re-examine signalling technology. Immediately after the accident, the Long Forgan signal box and many others across the country were fitted with repeaters, which indicated the exact position of the semaphore arm to the signalman, so that he'd know if it had malfunctioned. But the mechanical flaws of the semaphore system had been exposed, and gradually these signals were phased out in favour of colour lights with less potential for ambiguity and significantly lower maintenance costs. But surprisingly, they haven't stopped signalling disasters. In other accidents, sunlight, shadows and scaffolding have all been cited as factors in obscuring a driver's view. It remains clear that any form of signalling still carries with it the possibility of a driver passing a signal at danger. Engineers in Europe are now developing a radical new idea for signals, getting rid of them altogether. And their system involves such advanced technology that in the future, the high-speed train driver himself may also be a thing of the past.
Already, the technology is there for trains to travel at hundreds of miles per hour without a driver. A revolutionary train protection system is now being implemented in Europe that will make passengers safer than ever. It's called the European Rail Traffic Management System, ERTMS. At the moment, trains are controlled by outside signals which the driver has to see. The crucial point about ERTMS is that signals will be directly transmitted into the train's control system so that they can't possibly be overridden or missed by the driver. A unique satellite radio communication system transmits signalling instructions from a control centre directly to a computer in the driver's cab called the European Train Control System, ETCS. The computer uses this information to calculate the safest maximum speed at which the driver can travel. If the driver disobeys the computer, it will automatically slow the train to within the safe limit. The ETCS onboard computer virtually eliminates the possibility of a signalling disaster. But there are other benefits too. A fully equipped ETCS train constantly transmits its location to the control centre, allowing trains to run closer together and line capacity to be increased without safety risks. This groundbreaking technology is already in its infancy in more than 10 different countries and is set to be installed on all European high-speed lines in the future. If computers are now in control of high-speed trains, it could be argued that there's no need for a driver. The AGV is equipped with ETCS technology, but Francois Lacote is not about to let his driver go. Donc cette association entre l'automatisme et le vieillis de tous les éléments prévus et de l'homme qui sait réagir face à un imprévu, c'est ça qui maintenant va faire la sécurité absolue du train à grande vitesse. Ça doit rester la solution. Le conducteur reste indispensable à bord. There are a number of driverless services operating around the world, but they exist as relatively low-speed metro links. As yet, there are no driverless high-speed trains in commercial operation. But some suggest that's not because of the limitations of technology, it's psychological. People will not accept the idea of a train being driven at several hundred miles an hour along busy tracks with lots of other trains without there being a driver there to reassure them that their journey will be safe. Whatever the future for the high-speed train driver, there's no doubt that the huge advances in safety technology have made the possibility of disaster increasingly remote. And as European high-speed lines embrace this cutting-edge safety system, Francois Lacote is proud to have a train that's ready for the challenge. I wanted the train for the réseau ferroviaire à grande vitesse de l'Europe, c'est-à-dire un train complètement européen, capable de toutes les lignes ferroviaires de l'Europe, et un train capable de la vitesse du futur, c'est-à-dire au moins 360 km à l'heure. C'était le train du futur de l'Europe. The AGV is certainly a high-speed train for the future. But that's only because it's a product of the disasters of the past. 接下来，麦克罗这次在鸡蛋工厂的工作经验将令他终生难忘。体验被十六万只鸡团团围绕的恐惧，千万别错过《干净苦差事》，接着播出。